Hello YouTube, welcome to Bowtide Media, and today we have got another installment of This Week in EDM, where I go over songs that came out this week in EDM, and we are going to be getting it down and running it down to just 25 songs each week from now on, I think is the plan, because all these songs were first talked about and listened to on the Saturday live stream. It happens Saturday at 2 p.m. PST, so I'm not sure what that is for your local time, but come hang out with us. Listen to these new songs that we're going to be talking about and vote on where you think the songs are, if they're standout, good, meh, bad, and we will put them into one of the five categories with those four votes because YouTube does only give me four options even though there's five categories. So let's hop into it. First track of the week and our worst track of the week is Mosh by Nightmare. It is a trash song. It's our only song in the trash category this week. Uh, yeah, Mosh by Nightmare featuring Smoke, Pop, Smoke Perp. Um, this song had no drop. Uh, it felt like it was just a kind of rap song. I guess Smoke Perp is a rap artist and this song didn't really have anything to it. So I don't understand why this song really existed. It was really short and uh, yeah, why is this song, why does it exist? Not sure. Uh, up next, our second worst song and in the bad category now is San Francisco by Comey. Uh, a lot of people were not liking this one. It's a weird, interesting kind of housey, funky mix. It's like, a, I believe it's a bass house. Um, and, uh, you know, Comey has an interesting style, but this one just doesn't feel like it at all. And, uh, and no, no turtles were harmed in the, in the making of this uh, song, which is a, a joke from the stream, uh, which we're just gonna leave it at that. Uh, weird sound design, uh, yeah, was a put off for a lot of people. Up next, uh, Don't You Hold Me Down by Alan Walker and Georgia Koo. Uh, just another kind of basic Alan Walker track. Uh, a lot of people did not like this song in any capacity. That's why it's our third last song of the week. A lot of people were saying that Alan Walker was okay at the beginning and now it's just the same song over and over and over and over again. And so they don't like Alan Walker. And I get that, I get that sentiment. I really, really do. I'm not a huge Alan Walker fan myself. Uh, up next is NGMF uh, by Gammer and Riot 10. And uh, this one was quite vulgar uh, and it just didn't, it felt like it was trying to be super edgy and it just didn't really hit. It was trying to be a lot of things at once, I think. There was a, a few, it was maybe a, potentially a full flavor song having three different drop genres, but uh, it just, uh, it didn't work out. It, it was an odd song and a lot of people uh, did not like it, that's for sure. Up next is Love Is Gone, the Rehab Remix, originally by Slander featuring Dylan Matthew. Uh, so this song is interesting because the original, I think a lot of people on the stream really, really like the original. It's emotional, it's hard hitting, it's a great Slander track, uh, at least in a few of our opinions. And um, this remix just took all of what was great about the original and made it crap. And I get it because the remixes are supposed to be different. They're supposed to be a different genre, a different style of or, or the song or a different take on it. But uh, this one just felt boring and uh, useless. There's really no reason for the song to have existed in my opinion. Up next, uh, Over and Over by uh, Laidback Luke and Rock Sue. Um, this one, I think, from what I can remember, it was a pretty basic commercial house track with not a lot going on. Uh, there was a lot of songs on the stream where a lot of it, a lot of the time it felt like we've heard it over and over and over and over again just because the commercial house or the even just house general genre right now is feels so derivative and it just, yeah. Not, not a huge fan, and I think a majority was with me on that. Um, and that's why it's in the bad category. Uh, and we're moving up into the meh category now. Uh, we've got Boom by Blank. And uh, this song uh, does go boom a little bit. Uh, it is aggressive in your face. It's what uh, people noted as Britum, like bro step Britum. Uh, it, was, uh, it was very, very loud. Very, very loud is the best way I can describe it. And uh, it was just a little too intense, especially for me. I honestly would have personally put this in the bad category, but there's enough people that thought it was just meh or good enough to be in the meh category. So if you like the very, very in your face, bro step rhythm kind of stuff, you like this, but otherwise, nah. Up next, we have Anita by Armin Van Buren and Timmy Trumpet. Uh, this was a very interesting song. I think the best comment about this one was it sounded like a 1940s kind of uh, parade or festival song that was made for the modern era, uh, but it was 
fairly derivative, which is a word I've used a lot and a word that we used a lot in the stream because this week felt really rough, honestly, and this one felt like it was uh, pandering a little bit, maybe. It had um, a lot of uh, Latino roots to it and uh, Hispanic sound, but um, especially for me, I obviously am not Hispanic, Latino in any way, uh, and so this was, uh, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but um, I can see why it would be a fun kind of festival track. Uh, up next, Wish You Were Here by Vice Tone and William, uh, featuring Wink XY. Uh, if this song was in the Legacy LP that just came out on Monster Cat, uh, I would have said that it would have been not bad. One of the uh, above average to a fairly bad album, I would have said. Uh, but this is kind of just more of the same. It's the kind of the basic commercial house that Vice Tone has been putting out for the last little bit. And uh, we kind of, we're kind of done with it. We kind of don't want this music anymore. We don't want this Vice Tone style anymore. We want to go back to the uh, what are you waiting for days and the Nevada days. And we, we want those. We want that back. But we did not get that. Uh, moving up next in, is the Hot Air Balloon by Don Diablo and Arco. Uh, this one I thought was by far the most forgettable song of the whole stream of the 25 songs this week. Uh, it just didn't have a lot going for it. Um, there was that uh, the sound of saying hot air balloon was mixed in weirdly with the uh, it was mixed or the vocals were, were put in the mix strangely. I would say they felt really distant and odd and it was just uh, yeah, it was just an odd track that was uh, very, very forgettable. So that's why it's there. Uh, up next is Nerve Damage by Tasaki, or the, sorry, the Tasaki remix of Nerve Damage originally by Must Die. Uh, this is your kind of basic bread and butter Tasaki remix. Um, Tasaki or Tosoki has a very uh, refined niche style as of late. That's kind of this um, uh, very interesting trap sound with a lot of deeper hits into it, uh, like larger wings or something like that, and uh, a little more mechanic mechanized noise, I would say. Uh, to some extent, and uh, this one is just the original song with that, and uh, yeah, I'm not the hugest Tasaki fan in terms of what he's doing as of late, but uh, it was good enough to land here, so that's where it's going to be. Up next is Juggernaut by Riot, and I think this shares the same sentiment as uh, the Boom by Blank, I would say a little bit, where uh, it was really intense, but it really wasn't as uh, well thought out or developed as some other stuff, especially off of Dogma Resistance, where that was their best project, I think, by far. It was their only real project, I guess, but uh, <laughs> a lot of the songs on that project were awesome. They were fantastic. They were well thought out. The uh, the, the genres of each of the drop worked well together, and even when they mixed it up, and uh, this one just wasn't that. It was intense, and it was really only that. It was just trying to be intense, and that was, uh, no, nah, not a big fan. Uh, up next is On a Mountain, the Flume remix, originally by uh, Danny L. Harley and D DJ Danny. I think they're the same person, but uh, yeah. Uh, this was an interesting Flume mix. Uh, it was it was your, kind of your classic Flume, but it was a little more electro than it was kind of the uh, future-based stuff that Flume is kind of known for or was really popular with. Uh, the glitchy experimental stuff. It was a, lo a lot more electro, I would say. Had a little more drive to it than normal, but um, it was... Uh, for a Flume mix, I'd say it wasn't his... It wasn't a very good flume song, I would say, or definitely far from his best, but uh, it was a good song, in my opinion, at least. I liked it, but the rest of uh, the stream was just kind of meh on it. Up next is 2018 by Puppet, another similar one where we said to the Flume remix where uh, it was a below average song for this individual artist, but kind of just a meh song in general because the artist is normally someone that is more highly praised, especially in our little community here. But uh, yeah, 2018, it was a, a fun song. It didn't have a ton going on. It didn't have those big ups and downs that Puppet is known for. And uh, I think the song felt fairly linear and not a ton going on. A lot more rock inspired than it was EDM, that's for sure. And uh, I did a react to that. So if you want to go see my reaction to that song, uh, it is there somewhere uh, in the world of YouTube. Up next, uh, OCN by No Taker, or Ocean is pretty much what it is. Uh, we noted a lot uh, on the stream that he, No Taker is, is quite a good uh, musician or production artist. Uh, he makes some solid stuff, but this just kind of felt like background music for the most part. It was well produced, it's got a high quality to it, but nothing that I think anyone would really listen to over and over and over again, which is uh, why it just lands here in the Mac category. And it's got a uh, suite by Karma Fields, and they use the same sample, and so uh, it was kind of fun in that sense. Uh, Leave Us Behind by Arlo and 
Cran is up next. I, I realized I've been told it was Cran, not Caravan. But uh, this one was another kind of forgettable house mix. It felt like it had a little more joy and uh, lightheartedness to it, and so it wasn't as bad as some of the other commercial house stuff that we've talked about this week so far is. And um, yeah, for the most part, it wasn't too bad, uh, but definitely a forgettable track, I would say for sure. Uh, up next is Lovin' Every Minute by Area 21, who is Martin Garrix and Major. And uh, this song was kind of similar sentiment. Uh, it was a more, uh, it had a little space theme to it that was going on. It little, felt a little more electro than it was house for the most part. And um, had some cool kind of sounds to it, but otherwise uh, it wasn't anything too fantastical. And I think this one and Leave Us Behind were very close in score. They're, they felt the same where it was like a, oh, like this is kind of nice. But also I wouldn't really listen to this much more than once or twice maybe. And so that's why they're there. Uh, and next is Enter Rem, or R-E-M, by Oblivion, the Walmart Haywire, as some people called it in the chat. Uh, it's just Haywire that's a little toned down, or not as great. Uh, it does a lot of the keyboard MIDI stuff, with the pitch-ups and downs, and uh, playing a lot with it. It just felt like Oblivion was trying to do a lot with this song, especially this and her last song. Uh, it just sounds like there's a lot trying to happen. She's trying to mix in a ton of different genres and elements and motifs. And uh, it, in the end, it just kind of falls a little flat just because it's trying to do too much, I would say. Up next is Ghost Blood by Saint Punk and MXMS, or Maximus, I think? I'm not entirely sure. But uh, this song was very interesting. Uh, Saint Punk, known for his kind of deep house stuff, uh, this was uh, was chill. It was very laid back. It was almost like a chill electro pop. It was kind of groovy and vibey, and um, it was a very, very interesting turn uh, for Saint Punk in a genre that he's really not ever done in the past. And so, in that sense, it was kind of cool. It was a cool sh shift around, but uh, other than that, uh, it wasn't anything too special. Up next, uh, Say What You Want by Coven, a uh, first song of the good category for this week and our sixth top song of the week. Uh, it is Say What You Want, Coven. Um, Coven did a pretty okay, I would say, DNV track here. Uh, I think this is a little bit less quality than anything off of the butterfly effect, but I would still say it is a uh, above average song and the majority of you would agree with me because it is good. Uh, Katie's vocals are always top notch and I think it's part of the saving grace of this song. Up next is The Butterflies Party Pupils Remix by Max and Ali Gaddy. Ali Gaddy. Um, I'm actually surprised this one landed as high as it did. Uh, I put this in the list and I am a huge Party Pupils fan. They do a lot of uh, popular house remixes or deep house remixes of popular songs. And uh, I thought the song was just below average, but uh, you guys seem to really enjoy it. Uh, the, the, a lot of sentiments said the production felt clean and it was nice and the movements worked really well together in the song. Vocals were nice and um, all around people seem to really enjoy it. So that's why it's here in the good category. Up next is Choose One by Tynan, or the Tynan remix, uh, originally by Must Die and Link. Uh, this one is crazy, it is in your face, it is that kind of rhythm again, that bro step rhythm style uh, that Tynan is known for, for going having that hectic mellow dub kind of stuff, or melodic, uh, yeah, melodic rhythm, color base, I'm not sure exactly what you guys categorize this as, but uh, it was a little too intense for me, uh, but a lot of you guys really, really enjoyed it, and that's why it's the fourth top song this week. So if you like that kind of, uh, if, if Tiny is a name that you're like excited for, then you will like this, I'm sure, especially if you like Must Die. And our last song of the good category and our third top song is Surround Me by Former Hero. The album has come out. I haven't listened to it yet. I'd like to give it uh, a shot soon, but the Former Hero album on Bitbird is out and Surround Me is the last single to be released alongside the LP. And uh, it's good. It's uh, It's got a nice tone to it. It's got a beautiful atmosphere. It's uh, quite emotional in some areas, but it does feel a little melodramatic in some aspects. Some people said that they cry to the song and some people say it's way too overdramatic. And so uh, it just depends where you land on that spectrum of half, if you will or won't like this song in particular. Up next, uh, I think for the first time ever in This Week in EDM, we have multiple standout songs. I think this is the first time. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, let me just do a quick check. Oh, no, it's not the first time. My bad. My bad. Not the first time. But uh, <laughs> uh, we have Existentia by Fowler. Um, I did not expect the song to be as good as it was. 
And maybe that's because it was based off of, or based in a pretty poor Monster Cat week, I would say. It started the week off pretty strong, and I think because the week was pretty bad, it's it kind of elevated the song to higher levels. But I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It was uh, very existential-ish. Like, it was uh, almost like LSD-ish in some aspect. It felt like you were kind of all over the place. And the sounds um, felt chaotic, but they also felt uh, musical. They, they, I could feel the musicality of the song well. It was uh, quite all over the place, and so I was a big fan of it. And finally, our number one song of the week in This Week in EDM was Neon Angel by Virtual Riot and Lectric, uh, featuring Lee Culliver. Uh, after his first single of the album came out, I had not the greatest expectations because I don't love Virtual Riot rhythm, but this song uh, was fantastic. It, uh, it's really not rhythm at all, or even dubstep. It's honestly like uh, an electro house. I would say the best uh, example I would say is, it sounds very similar to like a Dion Timmer, I would say, in terms of its driven electro pace. And I think a lot of that comes from from Electric, and so uh, big thanks for, I guess, him or them, I have no idea who they actually are, uh, being on this track. I think it really helped out Virtual Riot a lot. It's got a solid atmosphere, it's a nice long song with some beautiful elements to it, so. Uh, that was this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of these songs in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Anything at all, if there's any songs I missed, let me know in the comment section below. I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.